So in this video, we're going to analyze and investigate a malicious document. So let's play this as a scenario where your SOC team have been made aware that a senior manager in your company has opened an email which contains a Word document. The document has been opened and the manager is concerned that it's malicious. So this document has now been forwarded on to us by the SOC for investigation and we need to determine one, if it is malicious and if so, what IOCs, so what indicators of compromise can we gather from our analysis? Now, I like to run multiple tools that perform similar functions. So in this video, I'll be running more than one tool to capture network traffic. Uh, and by doing this, it means I'm less likely to miss an IOC. And also, it's just a great way to demonstrate different tools and techniques for the purpose of these training videos. So to begin our analysis, let's open up the clean snapshot, which we set to host only earlier. So clicking on the spanner, you're gonna to wanna to click on host only. Uh, as we don't need any network connectivity at this moment. And um, first of all, let's just confirm. Let's, so this is our Word document here on my desktop. Let's just confirm that one, it is a Word document and let's say not an RTF file. So RTFs, which are rich text format files, they can just be opened and use exploits to fire off macros without enabling them. So we just want to make sure it is a Word document and nothing else. So let's just drag that into HXD. And we can see here by looking at the header, you see these values here, D0, CF, uh, 11E0, which looks like it says doc file. That is what we'd expect to see in a Word document. So I'm happy that that's a Word document and we can now uh, continue then our, our analysis. If this was an incident, what I'd probably do first of all is just get a hash of the file. So with this MD5 here, I could then copy that and put that into something like virus total just to sort of see what detections we're getting against AV vendors. Or if there's any further details that does indicate it's malicious. As I'm happy it's a Word document as well and not an RTF file, what I'd do next is just open it and just see what this looks like. So we can see here, very common technique where it says you have to enable content in order to view the content. Um, so again, this is a red flag straight away that this is potentially a malicious file. So we're not gonna enable this at the minute. Maybe that's, that's, that's gonna come in a short while. What I want to do first is just extract the uh, macros from this file. So open up your Remnux virtual machine as well. And we're going to copy the file across now to our Remnux VM. And to do that, we need to make sure that SSH is running. So SSH start. So you can see there, mine's already uh, running. And this is because we're going to use SCP to transfer it across, which uses SSH. So on your Windows machine, double click with SCP. And from this drop down, select SCP. And the host name is going to be the IP address, the internal IP address that you've assigned to your Remnux VM. So on mine, it ends with .128. Yours will probably be different. The username will be Remnux and the password will be malware. Click enter. And from here, you can see on the right hand side, it's connected to this slash home slash Remnux directory. And all you have to do is select your Word document on the desktop and drag it across and we can see that's now copied across. Close Win SCP as we don't need that anymore. And let's just go back to our Remnux distro. So on here, type PWD. I just want to print the working directory and check what directory we're in. So we're in slash home slash Remnux where we copied it across to. Type in LS to list the file listing. And we can see here is our document that we have copied across. So the first tool we're going to use is a Python script that's built into Remnux called OLE VBA. Now OLE stands for Object Linking and Embedding and is a Microsoft technology that allows embedding and linking to documents within other objects. So basically in this case, it's the macros within a Word document. And uh, OLE VBA, what we're going to use is a script to pass OLE files to detect these VBA macros. So for the sake of this demo, I'm only going to cover one usage really of this tool, but I will include the link uh, to the GitHub in the description of this video. 
So to use OLE VBA, let's first of all just make this window a little bigger. And I'm going to type in OLE VBA.py because it's a Python script. And then I'm just going to type out, well, I'm just going to type the first letter of our file and tab across. And then I'm just going to put a pipe on the end of this and type in less. And that's just going to allow me to tab through the output on the screen. So I'm pressing enter. And we can see here it's listing the file name that we're analyzing. And it's now starting to look at the macros. So the first one it's found, the first macro is this frjpossu.cls. And, and it's doing a document open. And then it's launching what's look like it's referencing a subroutine. And there's the end of the subroutine. So nothing too interesting here. The next one is this one that ends with .frm. And this is just showing as empty macro. So we're not interested in this either. And the next one is the one that is of interest to us. So we can see here VBA macro and it ends with .bas. And there's a function being declared at the top here along with a do while loop. Here we can see it's obfuscated. You know, these variable names aren't being, uh, you know, well, they're not human readable. And some of them are probably junk, some of them probably don't do anything. And the idea is they're, you know, just trying to make it difficult for us as malware analysts to understand what the script is doing. So we've, we've located the script, we've identified it, but it's not really given as much information here of what's going on. You know, we could spend some time maybe trying to break it down, but I'm not going to waste too much time on that for the time being. What I am interested, though, is at the bottom of the output of this um, tool is this table here that's presented to us with type, keyword, and description. And it's just pulled out some interesting keywords and told us what might be of interest to us. So you can see here this CHR is often used to convert characters. So it's saying here, may attempt to obfuscate, obfuscate sorry, specific strings. Well, we know that any day anyway, we've looked at the uh, script, we know it's heavily obfuscated. But what I am interested in is this bit here where it mentions base64 strings. So base64 encoded strings were detected and may be used to obfuscate strings. So next, you know, I think we need to start running the, these macros now. And maybe this base64 encoding is something we can look for and try to deobfuscate. So let's just uh, come out of that by pressing Q. I'm just going to press Control and L to clear my screen. And like I say, I'm going to start running these macros now and doing a bit of behavioral analysis to see if we can uh, pull out any more IOCs. So first of all, let's fire up INET SIM. Now this is a network uh, emulator and this is going to emulate some common ports and protocols. Um, so let's say if the script, that we're, no, sorry, the macros that we run, let's say we try and make a HTTP connection over port 80, INET SIM, will provide a response back uh, into fooling the script slash malware into believing that it has successfully uh, connected out over port 80. Let's just do file, new tab, and we're going to open up fake DNS. And now if the script tries to resolve, say, google.com, fake DNS will respond back and give it the appropriate responses as you can see here over port 53 UDP. Also, just because it's a great tool and the amount of data it captures, let's fire up Wireshark as well. So make sure you're connecting on the right interface on here. So mine's gonna be Ethernet zero. And then we're gonna click this little shark fin at the top left hand side to start capturing packets. And we're just gonna move back now to our Windows 7 machine. Now, I want Process Hacker running because I want to see what processes are running. Maybe I can spot some interesting ones that the script's going to fire up. I'm also going to fire up Procmon because I want to capture all the changes being made on the file system. And I'm just going to remove this uh, filter I've got set here. And now you can see the uh, activities being generated. I'll just minimize that. And we will also fire up our proxy tool here, Fiddler. And again, just, just an easy way of picking out uh, any URLs that may be called to by the script. So I'm quite happy we've got everything we need here. Um, so let's open up the document. And let's click Enable Content. Let's close that. Enable Content. Minimize that. 
uh, and I'm not seeing anything really appearing process wise so uh, nothing too interesting going on there let's uh, take a look on Fiddler so at the top we can see where it's starting to capture some URL traffic here so the first one again is just it's just an update check by uh, the tool we're using we're not too interested in that uh, we can also see some uh, Microsoft domains but what is interesting now is we're seeing some weird domains here that we've certainly not connected to so amelano.net slash and it looks like a wordpress site 911concept.com aonschools.com and if we look on the left hand side obviously we can see this is http traffic and it's got a 200 response which means it's, it's you know it's successfully got some data back and that's because we're running inet sim so let's uh, i'm going to stop capturing traffic on that as it looks like anything else is being populated I'm just going to stop capturing proc one as well as that just generate a lot of data and let's just move across to our Remnux distro so I'm just going to minimize what I'll stop Wireshark as well and I'll minimize that and back to our first tab where we had INET sim running just do control C to end the simulation and you can see here reports been written to slash var log slash INET sim slash report report dot two eight two five dot text so let's take a look at this and see what uh, activity has been generated now we should be seeing some of these uh, urls that uh, have been accessed uh, that we captured in uh, fiddler so i'm going to do sudo i'm going to use less and i'm just going to paste that in there now and i'm going to hit enter on that and again we can see some activity to say process hacker so again some update traffic uh, but again we can now see again these so get requests being made to these um, weird domains amelano.net 911concept.com and what we can also see is the response from inet sim here so you can see that it's give it back a fake file so this sample.html so from the get request and the response from inet sim we can now determine that uh, the script is trying to download a file which is potentially going to be malware so again like I mentioned before I'm just showing different ways we can capture this traffic and make sure we don't miss anything so I'm just going to press Q to come out of that and on our next tab I'm just going to do control and C and again we can just see here these requests that have been made these DNS requests um, so we could now start adding these to our incident notes as part of our analysis so what I'm going to do now is just go back to our Windows 7 machine and what we can do is we can look at the process uh, tree in Procmon and just see if it's pulled out anything interesting. So like I say, there's a lot of uh, processes in there. Let's just see if there's anything we can spot that might be of interest. So what stands out to me straight away is there was a PowerShell um, Pro, there was a PowerShell process opened here and this sort of gray blurred box next to it means it's been the process has been killed but at the bottom here what's interesting if we have this bit I'm highlighted now we can see the command that was run is PowerShell dash W hidden so that's maybe window hidden so that's maybe why we didn't see anything pop up uh, and then dot en so this sort of in, I don't know if it's encrypted um, in, what is it? Oh, encoded, sorry. So .en is encoded and we can see here. So before we, we saw mention of base64 uh, encoding and this here straight away, alphanumeric uppercase lowercase is a base64 command. So we're going to capture this and we're going to copy that and we're going to add this to our incidents notes now. And this is going to hopefully start to shed some light on what this script is doing. So I'm just going to close down this uh, Procmon, I'm going to minimize this and on my host machine I'm going to open up a web browser and I'm going to go to Cyberchef which is one of my favorite tools. So from here I'm going to input the base64 output that we've captured from uh, Procmon and we can start to manipulate this data now by adding these operations to the recipe uh, panel here so like I say I recognize this as base64 and also there was mention of base64 in the analysis we did earlier so let's just do from base64 and drag this in and see what that gives us 
and in the output you can see this has changed now it's not you know perfectly readable but we can see some strings here that are http you know we can see some um, domains here we can see that reference to a web client uh, and just to tidy this up a bit little bit further what we want to do is get rid of these dots in between now these are null bytes so if i type in null in here there's an option there to remove the null bytes so what else have we got going on in here so it makes it a little bit easier and we can see that these are being maybe this is being the new lines are being split possibly on these uh, colons or semicolons here so let's just search for split I'm going to drag that across and the delimiter I'm going to change to uh, the semicolon here and I can see it just looks a bit tidier now we can see these variables being declared um, and we've also got our URL saying now these would definitely want to capture these these are definitely what we want to sort of feed back to the sock and add to our incident notes so I'm just going to pull these out here and I can do that um, well by just by looking at them I can see each new URL seems to start with this asterisk so let's just do another split here I have the delimiter as the asterisk and what I'm going to do is we're going to use some built-in regex here um, to pull out the URL so if I click on favorites regular expression user defined and URL and I'm going to select list matches and I've now got some URLs I can now feed back to the SOC so to tidy these up and make them safe for emailing I'm just going to defang these URLs so nobody accidentally clicks on them and I can now copy this output and let's add that to our incident notes here so we've already pulled out some URLs that we could now send back to our SOC and say look make sure these are blocked in our proxies can you do some checks to see if anybody else has opened these documents um, I'm just going to remove these um, operators that I've added and I'm just going to see if I can tidy up this code a little bit more just to see if there's any other indicators here that we can use for our um, for our investigation so let's copy this now and let's put that in my favorite text editor sublime and let's just see if we could get any other idea of what's going on here obviously we know some connections are being made but is there any you know can we sort of provide any more context to what's going on here so like I say these anything with a dollar here these are some variables that are being declared and all I'm doing is I'm highlighting them and seeing if anywhere else in this script do we get any other matches and by highlighting them I should get a match if they're being used and they're not in this one here so it's just junk code so I'm going to delete that as it's not relevant now the next variable is this one here which begins with DAB and we can see this is being referenced uh, on line 11 and it's being passed the value 267 so just to try and make this a bit more readable I could change this to 267 and we can see here it's being concatenated with this plus sign so I'm going to get rid of this plus sign and I'm just going to get rid of the extra 6 and we can see here 267.exe is being referenced so now I'm guessing that when the malware's when the script's downloaded the malware, it's going to be called 267.exe. We can also see here this env variable. Now that's the envir environment and it's referencing user profile. So this 267, it's safe to assume it's going to be downloaded to the user's user profile path on the C drive. Um, so is that referenced anywhere else yet? Yeah, it's referenced a few times here on line 16 and 18. Um, let's just look on line 12 see if there's any other references to this next variable nope so I'm going to delete that and here we can see look you see these pluses here again it's just a way of avoiding maybe AV detections um, by splitting up these strings so I'm just going to get rid of the pluses and we can see a new object and it's saying net web client so obviously this is going to be the network connection and this is being this this content here is being passed into that variable so we could say just copy that and replace this here just to sort of again just to try and make it a bit more readable the next line 14 again I'm highlighting nothing's being referenced I'm just going to delete that 
and we can see here this variable here is obviously all the URLs that we've already pulled out and there's a for loop being uh, declared here so I'm guessing it's saying for each um, for each URL try and so you know create a web client to try and connect and then here's a bit, bit of simple obfuscation here and download a file well what's the file we know that this pqx is the um, 267.exe let's just tidy that up a bit 267.exe uh, line 15 what else is going on nothing with this I can delete that and then it's saying if so that was like get item so if it gets item 267.exe and the length of the file is greater than or equal to 25859 start the process for 267.exe so based on that analysis we've done we can now go back to our SOC and say, like I say, we've got a bunch of URLs. We need to look for a process called 267 that's running from the user's user profile. And not only can we now use that to look for uh, the person who's reported uh, the malicious Word document, we can also use that to look across our entire estate for any other evidence of compromise. So that's the end of this video. On the next one, we're going to be used our clean snapshot which has a network connection and we're going to actually connect to the internet and try and download this malicious file.